public service announcement. God don't need your help to do what he need to do for you. And he never asked for it. So every morning I do like a 10 minute meditation. And a couple mornings ago, I was doing my meditation. And every now and then, you know, you could be meditating, but you're not always focused completely. It might be something that's going on in your life that's distracting you. You might be concerned about what's coming up in that day or some stuff that's on the way. But whatever the case is, you're not fully there. You're not able to fully get submerged into the meditation. And this was one of those days. And after the end of the meditation, a voice clear as day said to me from within my mind, I never asked you for your help. And the voice was so clear. And the only way I could describe it was similar to like a parent telling their child something. Like if you're concerned about something or if you if you thought that you had to handle something on your own and your parents saying, look, I ain't asked for your help. It's similar to like even what you being created. Like I know you here, you're born, you're walking, talking, you're doing for yourself. But when we was making you, we ain't asked for your help. Me and your mama didn't consult with you to bring you into this world. And that's the way that voice was to me. It was comforting. And so I got emotional behind it. And the emotion came because it was comforting. It was like, you know, somebody let me know, like, I don't need you to figure this shit out. All I need you to do is go and do what you can do. Now, growing up, I wasn't, grow- I wasn't raised in a church, but I spent periods inside the church. There was two significant periods in my life where I was in the Christian church. One when my mom took me as a young uh, man, probably from middle school to about high school almost. And then there was another church I went to that I actually joined and then my family joined for another period of my life of about three years. But I, didn't, I wasn't just raised in a church. I don't grow up in a home where we just went to church every Sunday as mandatory. So um, Christianity was introduced to me. And in my last time I was in the church, I was really active in it because I put myself in there and I was studying and I was applying myself. You know, I'd be the first one there. Pastor gave me a key. I was elevated to an elder. So that meant he would send me to other churches to minister. And basically I was fully dedicated. But I had reached a point while going to church where I felt like I was I wasn't growing anymore. Now, I'm not saying that I outgrew God. Or I outgrew the Bible because I don't think you could do that. But I was outgrowing the situation and it's a good church, but I was outgrowing. I wasn't growing anymore spiritually. And so I needed to go other places because my thing was about growth. And so I went out into the world and I began to study a lot of different religions because before then, all I knew was the Bible. But after that, I had read the Quran, had met the rest of the black man in America. I had read scriptures from the Bhagavad Gita. I had read Hindu spirituality, Buddhist spirituality, Taoist, Zoroastrian. If I'm not saying that right, excuse me. I read about Zeke's. I studied a lot. And ironically, I studied a lot of this in the penitentiary and on the streets. And. I began to become more awakened to who I was and to what was going on in reality. Now, what I began to understand is that every religious or spiritual system has its own niche or has its one thing that it's, uh, I would say, the best at and that you can learn the most from. If you really want to understand meditation, you will go more to the Eastern religions. If you want to understand like the science of the mind and the spiritual or spirit body connection, you will go with more of the Eastern traditions. But if you want to understand faith and belief, I think that the Western religions, uh, speaking on Judaism, Islam, and specifically Christianity, have a monopoly on the understanding of that. And I believe that Christianity specifically is the best for teaching based on the teachings of Jesus Christ, understanding faith. Now, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, faith is important because there's a lot of uncertainty and there's always what I call the unknown factor. So no matter how much you know, no matter how much you read, no matter how much you plan, there's always an unknown factor that exists. And the only way to get through that unknown factor 
is by walking by faith through it. So you have to believe that things are just going to work out. You can have a plan for how you want to run your day or how you want to run your business. You can have everything in play. You can put all the right uh, mechanisms and systems in play. But then there's an aspect of faith that has to be involved because there's a lot of unpredictability. Let me give you an example. If you have a job, most of the time, you know what you're going to make at the end of the week, even if you work more hours because you get a paid a certain amount per hour. So you know how to calculate what you're going to get at the end of the week. And based on knowing that, you can actually budget and know what bills you can and cannot pay and what you can and cannot do. But with an entrepreneur, especially in the early stages, there is a lot of unpredictability financially. So you don't really know this week to the next week what you're going to make. And so budgeting becomes difficult. And there's a lot of uncertainty in if you're going to be able to handle certain things on time. And so a lot of times you start the week, you just believe in that you're going to get through that week and you're going to make the amount of money at the base level that you need. And that involves faith. So being an entrepreneur, faith is very, very important. Now, for an entrepreneur like me, where we're hardwired to consistently try to see what we can do, what we can do, we kind of downplay faith and we kind of overdo the action part. And what I believe is because there's an unknown factor, an entrepreneur needs to understand the ratio of action to faith. Now that ratio may be different for each person because each person has a different circumstance or situation. Some people can take more action than others. It's like a person who's single being an entrepreneur versus a person who's married with children being an entrepreneur. Obviously, the single person can take more action than the married one with children, but they both need to take a certain ratio of action to faith to accomplish their intended goal. And like I said, I believe Christianity specifically helps you better understand how to apply and use and manage faith in your circumstances. Let me give you another example. When you're dealing with a farmer, a farmer is a type of person who has to know how to prepare the ground, has to know how to plant the seed, and how to know how to space the plants and the seeds so that they grow correctly, and then also has to know how much watering to do with the seed based upon the weather or based upon the type of plant it is that maybe need more water versus another one that may need less water. Now, once the farmer does his part in prepping the soil and sowing the seed and watering, he has to leave the rest up to nature to do nature's part. When nature is doing its part, we don't know how things are going to turn out. We don't know if we're going to have a big harvest or a small harvest. We don't know if, you know, all these, you know, fruits that we we planted are going to come out uh, ripe and well and big or or not. So there is an unknown factor in the farming industry where faith has to be applied. And where is your faith placed? Your faith is placed in you knew you took the proper precautions to give yourself the best opportunity. But you always know there couldn't be that unknown factor. So you have to leave it in faith. You have to believe for the results that you want. Now, again, a person like me who's so hardwired, I'm the one who will go and farm and I'll come back next day, don't see the seed sprouting. I'll take the seed out, put it in another piece of soil, or put it in another pot. And then I'll go the next day and I'm like, hey, did I see nothing? I don't see nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna take the seed out. I'll put it in, and, 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 or if I'm not taking the seed out and moving it around saying maybe it's not the right location, then I'm probably putting too much water on it, think I'm gonna rush the process. And then I don't get a harvest. And I'm wondering, okay, I didn't did all this and I didn't did all this, why I'm not getting the fruits of my labor? It's because I focus too much on action and trying to control the outcome. And, and farmers or people who are green thumbs and planters, they understand this concept. There's only so much you can do and the rest needs to be left up to nature. And that applies to entrepreneurs in life in general. You have to understand the ratio of action to faith. And you have to apply faith to the unknown factor of whatever you're doing. Now, 
I'm not going to give you any kind of recipe or give you any points for this one because this one doesn't apply to that. But you have to understand that there's a ratio of action to faith. Now, the best way to describe it is this way. People always say, do what you can do or what you can have control over and worry about that. And don't worry about the things you don't have control over. And that's just the best way to look at it. The things that you have control over, you need to focus on. The things you don't have control over, stop worrying about them and apply faith to it. I'm going to give you an example with me. Um, I make content, a lot of content. And I've got to the point where I make content to post on my social media pages at least five days a week. I got a YouTube page, I have a TikTok page, I have an Instagram page, thread page, I have a LinkedIn page. I have all these different pages and they all need to be fed content and I have a different order in which I feed the content to them. Now, five days a week of doing content, which is very time consuming, is a lot, especially for a man who runs his own business, who has a wife who runs a business, who has four children in the house that range from four to 16 who are actively moving around and doing things. And there's a lot of needs and things that need to go on in this house. There's grocery shopping to do. There's me running my business and my business is physically demanding. I do handyman work. So I'm not just sitting around at a desk typing. I'm actually doing physical labor that I have to fully be focused on. Now, doing content is just another job for me. But there's always this little voice in the back of my head saying, you can do more. You can do, you can post seven days a week. Now, that's true. I probably can. I probably can find some way to eliminate something going on in my life and make a little bit more time to create a couple of more posts. But what I realize is that by adding those two more days, I'm not really adding any much more value especially to my content. Those two extra days, I can be sitting back and resting and allowing myself to regroup to create more content and allowing myself to be, you know, my mind to be cleared so I can be able to be more creative instead of boggling myself down. So I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick to posting five days a week and making enough content for five days a week. And I'm going to give myself the weekends to not post anything, to kind of pull back away from the social media because I post regularly on multiple social media pages and it's okay. And what I'm going to do is on those days when I'm not posting, I have to quiet that voice that's saying, man, you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. You're not doing enough because I might be running ads. And as long as I'm running ads, that means that things on my page are being pushed out to a certain audience. You know what I'm saying? So I'm automating a part of the process. So that I can sit back and I can relax. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's just part of me. And I know it's a lot of you out there that's really hardwired and hard driving and always think you can do more. It's not about that. It's about understanding the direct balance between how much action to take and how much faith to apply. What I have to do in those two days on the weekend when I'm not doing content is believe that the content that I put out is making the effect or having the effect that I wanted to have on the audience and the community that I'm building. I can't force it all the time. I can't force opportunities to come. I can't force the uh, outcomes that I want all the time. What I can do is I can do what I can and then I can drop back. There's a thing in exercising that uh, I learned from Mike Mincer, who was an um, Olympian uh, or not Olympian, but he, he, he won the uh, Mr. Olympia. And he says something about working out. And I've experienced it myself that. There's a point in working out that after you do so many sets, what you're doing after that is more damaging than it is helpful to your actual goal. So there's a point at which you can work out or a period in which you can work out. And then after that, once you pass that period, the workout that you're doing is not benefiting you anymore. Now, I'm not talking about overworking out. I'm not talking about injuring yourself. I'm just talking about there gets a point to you do so many reps and you do so many sets where now you don't reach maximum or critical mass. And now beyond that, there's no benefit. Now you're just putting extra fatigue on the muscle. And so you have to apply that to when you're out here taking action for your business. You have to apply the concept that there's only so much action that I can take before I need to stop back and allow or step back and allow that action to manifest the results. Going back to the farmer. It's only so much watering, so much planting 
and so much soil preparation I can do before I have to sit back and let nature run its course. So again, faith plays a big role. And I spoke earlier about being a Christian because I wanted to bring the fact that if you want to learn how to apply faith, the best scriptures and the best book on teaching how to apply faith is in the Bible and specifically in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament as well, because there are good examples of how to let go and let God, per se, depending on what your God is. And it's a good strategy. Christianity has a good strategy for letting go and having faith and believing for the outcome. And if you're struggling with that concept, which I have been struggling with, and that's what allowed me to turn back to Christianity, is that Christianity can teach you how to properly apply faith to your situation. Because as an entrepreneur, you're going to need it. You're going to need a lot of faith because there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. And guess what? There's not enough coaches. There's not enough YouTube videos. There's not enough books. There's not enough conferences or lectures that you can listen to and attend that's going to replace faith. You have to have a certain ratio of action to faith because faith is going to make up for the unknown factor and the unknown factor exists in everything i mean think about it in quantum physics we believe that the physical world only makes up one percent of reality so that other 99 percent of reality is in the unknown that means majority of what you are is in your mind and imagination one of the hermetic principles is that all is mine. And what is mine? Mine is a substance that's so subtle, it takes up all space, and it takes up no space at the same damn time. You can't touch it, but it's there. It's everywhere and nowhere. So with that being understood, faith is a perfect tool to help you to get rid of the anxiety, get rid of the depression and the over un or unnecessary stressing over the things you can't control. You know, if you're not a Christian, it's OK. You don't have to be a Christian per se. But in Christianity, you can learn the techniques to let go. So I recommend people to do it. You know, look at the Bible as a book like any other book that you study. And like I have a book right now for personal training I'm studying. I look at the Bible as a textbook to help me in certain areas where it is or has expertise in. And then if I want to go and more understand, you know, meditation and get my meditation more stronger, then I go to a, another religion or book. Because I live a holistic life and I need every aspect of my life taken care of. When I need to talk about my issues and stuff, you can go to a therapist. When I need to get in shape, I get a personal trainer. But when I want to understand faith and how to apply it, because it's a very necessary aspect of being an entrepreneur, I've come to understand that Christianity has that on lock. And if you really want to understand that, you really have to look at the story of Jesus and you really have to look at the Bible in its entirety because faith is a uh, is a the underlining theme from beginning to end. From the time that Abraham left his family to go to the land that God promised to the time that Noah had to build the ark to the time that Moses had to go and get his people to the time of the 12 judges when they had to help the children of Israel to the time of David to the time of all of the prophets that came uh, all the way up until the New Testament. And Jesus whole concept was faith. He would constantly tell people, by your faith, you heal. He couldn't do certain things in certain areas because they didn't believe. The concept of faith must be understood because of the unknown factor. That's all I have today. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the unknown factor and what you know about the ratio of action to faith. Are you trying to do too much action to compensate for the fact that you don't have no faith? Let's talk about it. You know, let's dig into that. Also, if you're not hip to it, check all of my social media accounts. I have my TikTok. I have my Instagram. It's all Coach Eli Bay. I have my LinkedIn for all speaking engagements and things of that nature. I speak. I business coach. I personal train. So if you need any of those, tap in with me. I have a website, www coach e.co that's coach e.co you can go there 
have testimonials. I have other services that I provide. You can reach out to me with a email. I also, on August 7th, which is in a couple of days, have a webinar coming up called AI Proof, where I dive into the home service industry and the blue collar jobs that you can create for yourself in this uncertain economy to make sure that you still have income coming in that will not be affected by AI. But as a matter of fact, AI will actually help you perform better. And with that being said, as I always say, don't be good, be good at it.